asked D'Angelo Hall. So, D'Angelo, I want to get your take on this. Yeah. Uh, do you have any concern taking Kyler number one? I mean, I got a little bit of concern, especially hearing this. And, you know, Charlie Cashley is a well-respected guy in the, in, in the game. And so, you know, to hear that Kyler Murray didn't impress people like I thought he would, you know, it is a little troubling. But on the reverse of that, like, what, would, what was the situation? What were the teams? Because, you know, I've been in those interview processes as a player and as a kind of front office guy. And I've seen guys who come in there knowing hmm. this team has... This team's picking 23. I'm a top five pick. You know, I, I'm just kind of going through the motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some guys yeah. go in that meeting going through the motions like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, sir, yeah, no. You know, kind of very mum with okay. their answers and just, you know, kind of nonchalant like, you know, why am I here? Y'all are wasting my time. Mm -hmm. Now, if that was Kyla's approach, then that's a bad approach because, as you know, anybody... If they fall in love with you, they will do anything to get you. And so, you know, I think the advice for him should have been, hey, look, go in there and let's wow everyone. We already have a lot of uh, marks against who they you sense. are as a, yeah, because of your height and other things. So let's go in there and let's wow everybody and, and, and let's not give them anything to talk about. Because through this whole process, I would have thought that your agent would have given you the playbook. That's the thing that's, that, that confuses me with why kids don't excel at the Wonder League or excel at, you know, drills at the Combine or even interviews. They've given you the roadmap. Everyone, every agent who goes here and recruits you gives you his spiel on why you should pick him. And part of that is, hey, we have some of the best combine prep guys. We can get you da 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 da, -da. We can get you to the interview coach. We and interview they get the coach. practice on the Wonder Lick test that you're going to yeah. actually take at the combine. Yeah, and so I just, <laughs> you know, I'm just a little confused on if Kyler really was in there trying to woo guys or okay. if he kind of knew, you know, I'm going to Arizona anyway. Okay, but remember, his agent is Cliff Kingsbury's I, I, agent. Okay? I, I, so I did know that, yeah. a whole new game that you're playing, right? <laughs> for me, okay. for me... The concerns that I have with is physical. It has nothing to do with what Charlie said that may or may not yeah. be true. I worry about a 5'10 guy that's, basically, that's probably going to play the, the first part of his career, four or five years, at barely 200 pounds. Can he withstand the physical rigors of playing quarterback in the mm -hmm. NFL, taking that pounding 16 games, a couple of preseason games, every year for the first five years? Those are my concerns. It has nothing to do. Skip, I've known some guys. That was great on the board. Oh, you call a play? Oh, if we get this coverage, this is where we're going to go with the ball. If we get that coverage, this is where we're going to go with the ball. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to check out and do that. But couldn't play dead in a horror movie. Yeah, mm. yeah. So yeah. which one do you want? <laughs> Give me the guy. He might not be the greatest. He might not be uh, a yeah. uh, 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 rain man on the blackboard. Mm. Can he play Can he play football skill? Mm. That's what I need to know. I don't need to know all this stuff. No X equal pi square and all that other foolishness. Can he play football? And if he can play hey. football, give me that guy. And sometimes a blank canvas isn't necessarily bad because if I'm Coach King, uh, Kingsbury and, and, and I can get a blank canvas yes. as opposed to, and I don't know Josh Rosen, but just some of the stories I've heard and some of the things I've seen him say, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could see Coach Kingsbury coming in there trying to show Josh what to do and Josh saying, oh, hold on, I got this. I, yeah. I got this. This is how I watch film, Coach. It, it was and so like I can see Kyler's kind uh, of Jim Moore Jr. being more, kind of more moldable. Mm -hmm. Kind of butted heads at UCLA. Yeah, correct. By the way, Tony Romo was Rain Man in the TV booth last <laughs> he year, was, the year he before. Was, he and was, and was, on the football was. field, I'm like, I'm no, trying to figure Tony, if Tony was that good, Tony, how did he not figure out a couple times Tony, that I was sitting in the weeds doing? waiting for him? Yeah. But he was pretty amazing, I, I must say. Yeah. In the booth. In the booth. Yes. In the booth. I agree. In the booth. <laughs> I know you know Charlie Casterly, and he is respected. I thought. This came across as out of bounds to me. That these were cheap shots to me. And I, Jenny said he talked to several teams. I don't know. Did he really talk to several, yeah. or was it Specifics. one? Was it two? Mm -hmm. Was it the one or two that Kyler had no use for and no business for? I know enough about him. Jenny has interviewed him many times. Mm -hmm. He doesn't suffer fools lightly. You know, if you don't impress him quickly, he's got no use for you. Mm -hmm. If he thinks he's wasting his time. He he can act like a jerk to you. He he got a little crossways with Dan Patrick in that interview. Mm -hmm. And once you rub him the wrong way, he will rub back. Mm -hmm. That's how he is constructed. That's how he leads on the football field. He is all business. If you watch, I, I watched every snap he took at the University of Oklahoma. He leads with his body language, not with what he's saying. He's not verbal vocal. 
Mm -hmm. It's all about how he plays. He is a clutch, big moment playmaker. And when he throws a touchdown pass or runs 70 yards for a touchdown, he drops the football and he doesn't celebrate. He just goes with his teammates back to the bench. He doesn't. He doesn't wear. His, he's got a big chip on his shoulder, just like Baker Mayfield. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't wear his chip on his sleeve. It, it comes across as smoldering chip. You know, like like he's he's going to show you. He's not going to. Baker will tell you what he's going to do to you, and then he will show you. Then he'll back it up. But this kid is more quiet. He, he might come across as a touch shy. He's going to size you up, and if he doesn't mm -hmm. know you, he's going to be a little leery of you. And I don't know what his agent told him to do in mm -hmm. some interviews if he, if he said just shut it down for this one because we're not interested in that team. Yeah. You also have to be careful because they use it as reconnaissance. It's, it's like reverse psychology where they're going to pick your brain because they know they're not going to take you, but they're going <laughs> to yeah. have to compete against yep. you. Yep. What, what are you made of? Yep. What makes you tick? You know, show me something here. Mm -hmm. But how in 15 minutes you could conclude that he's not a leader and that he doesn't have good work habits, I don't know. Because I'm not sure how that comes across in a 15-minute interview. Help me out. Yeah, I mean, it's almost impossible. Having sat in those rooms yeah. um, on both ends of the spectrum, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard. Sometimes right. we barely get through one clip and it's like... You know, the, the yeah, horn's right. blown, so you're kind of like, well, man, you know, right. we, we didn't get much much out of that guy. Okay. And so, yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely go back to that, like, how much could you really have gotten? Right. And, you know, like I said, <clears throat> Charlie is well-respected. I disagree with a lot of things Charlie Cashley mm -hmm. says okay. normally, um, but I don't know this whole story, you know? I don't know Kyler Murray at all um, from what I see. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is I want to see what kind of leader he is. I mm -hmm. think, you know, when I heard Freddie Kitchens talk about Baker Mayfield and the process in which um, they went through in drafting him, mm -hmm. he was just like, yeah, you know, these guys' numbers are very similar. They might can throw the ball, they might can run. But it's something about Baker, man. Yeah. When he walks in a room, yeah. like guys rally behind him. Guys want to follow him. Yeah. And if that can be Kyler Murray, he can be very, very special because mm -hmm. the things he can do on a field – Unmatched. But, D'Angelo, you know what goes with some of the stereotypical things that Charlie said. Because yep. when you say he's not good on the board, mm -hmm. you know, you ought to demand, go, smart. he's not smart. Yep. Well, is he going to prepare? Oh, he's lazy. Is he lazy? You yeah. know, um, so I, I just don't, you just, you have to be really, really careful when you say these things. And, yep. and for me, just, just say, you know, I, have, I heard a lot of negative feedback mm -hmm. yeah. on Kyler Murray. Yeah. You don't have to get into specifics. But to open I, that can up. Right. I heard, Skip, I talked to three or four different teams and that interviewed Kyler Murray. And the, the, the report that I got back from these teams, they weren't all glowing. Mm -hmm. there, are some things, there are some red flags that these teams had, mm -hmm. have about this young man. But when you start going there, Skip, you know, because we've heard it, Cam. And then it's young, mm -hmm. and wow. you, and it's just it's just a place that I, I don't think and I don't think Charlie was man. This is gonna be malicious. He's just telling you what he heard. But you have to be careful. One or two or ten. <sighs> or how I don't many? know. <laughs> I don't know. I would like to know for sure, because in the end, the tape does not lie. Yes. If you put this tape on. All he did was was pull off the greatest statistical year in college football history. And I realize his coach is calling his plays and is in his ear constantly because they're looking to the sideline for the call every yeah. time. They're going right? to call his plays in the NFL, right. too. Right? It'll be the same thing. <laughs> but listen, Kyler can see it and feel it. Trust me. He's low interception rate. He's accurate with the football. All of his gut instincts are correct, and he is pass first. He is not run yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. He is going to use the quickest feet I've ever seen on a football field to create throwing lanes and time to throw the football, and he can wing it. Skip believe he can outrun Vic. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah, you see my face? Nah. No. And it ain't even well, close. I, I told it you. Even, even Michael close. Vic said that Vic I mean, can outrun Lamar I mean, Jackson. I mean, that's what Mike's okay. supposed to say. When I was a young kid, Mike used to always say, d oh, man, you beat me in a race every single time. But then when, I, when we get out there and we get, when we start running and he's in the middle of a drill, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get him. <laughs> I, I don't so, think people. Mike was Mike, legit 4 3 3. Not 4 2. 
Four two. Mike was legit. Mike can run. Mike yeah, can run skill. Yeah, legit. I, I believe Kyler can go four two. I just really? do. You think I so? just do. No way. I don't see it. I see those little legs, and it kind of gives you that, 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 that false perception that he's really Darren's running really ball. really fast. It's not false. I have watched it. It's he can move. Jenny, Ooh, four, he four can two. Move. I don't know about four two. Yeah, I ran four, three, four three, one, really? and I, I'm telling you, that dude ain't running four, four two. Four, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Four one, four one at Virginia Tech. Well, we're talking I got about the record. His leadership. I got, got Vic's though. record. You, you got four yeah. one. Yep. Yep. Wait a second. You ran four yep. one. Yep. When you ran the combine, four three one. But I wasn't supposed to run. You got to let me tell my story. You got to let me tell my story. You got to let me tell my story. I wasn't supposed to run. So you know the top rated guys never run. So all week I wasn't running. I lifted hard, you know, so my legs were still heavy, didn't taper down, while all the other guys were tapering down because they knew they were going to run. Uh, Daryl Eto, who was our speed coach at uh, Athletes Performance, came there to work a lot of guys out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was warming up with him, running really fast. And he was like, wow, D-Hall, man, you probably should run. And I'm like, nah, you know, I'm not going to run. My agent said I shouldn't run. So I get in there and I'm doing all these interviews and I'm wowing everybody because <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm wowing everybody. <laughs> and so Coach Vermeil. Gets in there, and he's like, you know, D'Angelo, why don't you want to run? I'm like, well, coach, you know, my agent told me not to run. I've been lifting through this process, and so, you know, my legs aren't really ready, and he just starts crying. Why, why wouldn't you run for us? You, know, you got all 32 teams here, D'Angelo, and I'm watching him, and I'm tearing up. <laughs> okay, coach, I'll run. I'll run for you. And, and, and I ran, so... 